Are you ready to take a look inside of my dark and twisted mind? I promise I'm not crazed about Minecraft servers. Beautiful, unify silver networking stuff. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It is absolutely incredible. I'm getting full 1,000 down, 1,000 up. And it just works. So if I unplug this, I'll piss off a lot of people. Because if that one breaks, single point of failure! Woo! That's my rack! Hello, hello, Tubcuters enjoyers today. I've got a banger video planned for you. We're gonna be doing a rack tour because I just finished moving all of my servers into a real rack. This rack came with the building when we moved into the office. I will also show you all my, uh, my workbenches, but I thought I would start off by doing a rack tour. Basically, recently I've been more active on r slash home lab and I've been getting advice from there about how to do stuff in this big metal enclosure. But a lot of the questions I get on there is what kind of hardware and what are the specifics of in the rack and what is it for? Well, it's all entirely Minecraft servers, basically. So, come here, come here. Let me show you what I've been working on. Are you ready to take a look inside of my dark and twisted mind? So, let's start at the bottom and work our way up, shall we? This here, this one out down at the bottom, look at him. I should say her, this is Savannah. This is Storage Savannah, she's my storage server. Inside of her, she has four 18 terabyte, oh, oh, if I can pull that out, is it gonna? Got four 18 terabyte Western digital drives. Look at these puppies. And that basically is all of my storage for what I'm hoping will be my first ever live service that I'm stuck. oh god, oh god, it doesn't go back in. Oh, it doesn't go back in, come on, please! Oh god, I shouldn't force it. There we go, there we go. And then moving up from there, we have here, this is um, a server. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. This is basically one of the many servers in this rack, which are nodes entirely dedicated to hosting Minecraft servers. You might be thinking, Toby! Why do you have so many servers in your rack only for Minecraft servers? Well, in the next two days, I'm hoping to launch my first ever live service, which is dedicated to providing free Minecraft servers to the community. So it hasn't launched yet. If you're interested, you can go to play.hosting, entirely non-profit, free Minecraft server hosting, and that's what the whole rack's for. So go there, go there. Go and look at my free servers, go check them out. I promise I'm not crazed about Minecraft servers. I promise there's a genuine reason I'm doing this. These two servers here are both running the AMD Ethic 7551s in a dual configuration. The one above it has half a terabyte of RAM. The one underneath it has 228 gigs of RAM. And they're both connected using 10 gigabit SFP connectors. So this is an SFP plus connector. This one's actually from a breakout cable, which I'll get to in a second, but you can see they're all connected up here and they're going into here. So all of these guys' jobs, these can run 100 Minecraft servers each, where each server can roughly handle around 10 players at a stretch of capacity, six comfortably. On these two servers alone, you're looking at close to 2,000 players, max capacity, full load. Now, let me unscrew this front panel so you can have a little look. You might be thinking, Toby, what are these two here? These ones are also identical configurations, like these two. These ones here, you're never gonna guess, are also for Minecraft servers. So these ones are slightly different to these ones though. While these ones are running a dual CPU configuration, these ones are only running single. So this one here, oh, I can't really slide it out. These ones slide out, look at that, woo! These ones, it's not the best practice, but I've kind of just balanced it on top of the other servers. So if I pull this one out, you can see all of them come forward. Listen, it's my first time getting into this whole rack industry, you know? It's my first live ops project as well. Effectively, these two machines here are running the AMD Epic 7551P. What's interesting about the P version, which is what I didn't know when I built this, the P means that it doesn't support a dual CPU configuration. So while these two boxes here have Supermicro H11 um, DSi motherboards, which is a dual socket motherboard, I'm stupid and bought the P version of the processor so I can't run it in a dual CPU configuration. Hence, there's two of these instead of what was going to be one. But don't worry, it's not the end of the world. It just means later down the line, I've got quite easy room for expansion if I wanted to add more server capacity. 
So right now, these four boxes is 300 total Minecraft server instances and containers. But later down the line, if the Minecraft hosting is going well, I can very easily upgrade this to be 400 servers worth of capacity. All I need to do is swap out these two CPUs, the 7551P, for maybe a newer generation. These are all the, I wanna say 9001 generation, maybe going to 9002 epic generation. Could be the play for something like these. Oh, I should mention all four of these are using the Super Micro H11 DSi motherboard. I love it. I know it came out in 2016. It's genuinely the greatest motherboard I've ever used. And in the NAS, I think I'm using the Super Micro H11 SLI motherboard, which is the same generation as the four above, just the single socket variant. Right, moving on up, you'll see here, I have a very standard um, PDU here at the front. Most people actually mount their PDUs at the back of the rack. I've opted to mount mine at the front of the rack because if you look behind here, I've got a bunch of legacy cabling from this old building. It's a much easier to get to the power points on the front than it is for me to climb over this table, which is attached to the wall and get round to the back of the rack. Standard six plug PDU, fine. Surge protector, fine. You got a little bit of a master switch so you can do like a bump. Oh no, everything's off. Oh no, bump, everything's on. Moving up here, this is the legacy equipment I was on about. So these two here, these are the Cat 5e and Cat six patches which go to all of the networking in the building. That's like these ones down here. If you look at this one, looks like that. All these cables gotta go somewhere. They are into these black strips here. You can see the basement ones are taped up, so I remember which are which. A lot of open ones. And then when we move up, this is where it starts to get a little bit more fun. So, this is my newest addition to the rack. These, these beautiful, Unify silver networking stuff. What are these? These are network switches. This one here is a, oh God, USW Pro. I don't really, listen man. When I bought the stuff, I did a bunch of research about the equipment. Now it just works, I forget what it is. This is the Ubiquiti Pro um, 48. It doesn't have PoE because it's just to connect the outlets of the office. But what it does have, which is really nice, 10 gigabit SFP plus ports, which can hook up all of the servers down there so they can get their full 10 gigabit read and write from the NAS, which is very nice. 10 gigabit is about 1.2 gigabytes of user files transferred per second, which is very, very nice. So that was the main reason I went for the Pro rather than just the 48 port. Now, if we go above there, you can see here, I have a second legacy patch panel, which came with the building. This one only has the Wi-Fi access points on it. So everything that plugs into here is a PoE device, except for whichever port this is. I don't know where that one goes, but I remember it took me a long time to figure out what to plug into that one. This one is important, but it's not an access point. Don't ask me why. And then above here, we have a PoE network switch. This is the Ubiquiti Enterprise PoE24. You might be wondering why did I pick the Enterprise 24? And it was because of these 2.5 gigabit RJ45 connectors, as well as an additional 10 gigabit connector here. You might be thinking, I thought all of the servers were on SFP+, I thought they were all running 10 gigabit. No, no, not all of them. There are some exceptions. All of what I've deemed high capacity are all running 10 gigabit because they're going to have, at any given time, up to 50 to 100 servers running on them. So all of these have 10 gigabit networking. Continuing, over here we have the Ubiquiti aggregation switch with its very oh. cute touch screen. This, I must say, is the cheapest 10 gigabit level two network switch that you can get right now. It is absolutely incredible. The switching capacity, is more than enough for a SFP plus port. And it's 200 pounds right now on the Unify website. Genuinely could not recommend this shit enough. Then moving on that, we have our router firewall. Whoop, whoop, whoop. This one also has fun little trays for like, if I ever get security cameras, it will store security footage on there, but I would not trust them to be on the same subnet as publicly facing infrastructure. <laughs> this here is the Ubiquiti UDM Pro Max, which is the enterprise router. If you get two of these, you can run it in like a redundant shadow mode. I'm not doing that because I don't want to. That's a lot of money. So what have I got going on here? On here, I have my 10 gigabit downlink to the aggregation switch. It was in port 11, but actually something weird's happening with my 11th port where I think it might be damaged. So I'm gonna reach out about warranty. I've got dual 
one gigabit WANs coming in here. So, this line here, this light green cable here, this is my primary internet, which is symmetric one gigabit, which means 24 seven at any given time, I'm getting full 1000 down, 1000 up. But you might be thinking, what happens if that goes down? Also, you can see my fiber termination, for those of you that care, that's my fiber termination there. I'm gonna be honest, that's a little bit beyond my understanding. All I know is that like, oh yeah, I take this 10 gigabit RJ45 connector, I plug it into this 2.5 gigabit WAN here, and it just works. I, I set my termination to bridge mode rather than router mode. That works fine. So this is my primary connection. All of the main traffic goes through here. Like this is for the whole building. So if I unplug this, I'll piss off a lot of people. <laughs> oh no, I've just unplugged it. Surely so many people are now pissed off. No, they're not. Because what is this? A secondary green WAN connection. This one isn't even a fiber connection. This is just a backup copper hookup to Virgin Media's business network. So while this isn't symmetric, it's 1000 down, 100 up, which is more than enough for critical operations. So that's like the management of the machine and running the whole system at half capacity until the primary connection is restored. So it's an immediate failover to this connection. You can see there was a little spike there for a sec, but it immediately failed over and no one in the office came to yell to me that the internet died. Pretty good. There are some other machines which are up here. These are my high power nodes. So these are running Ryzen 9 9750Xs, which right now is the best value for money CPU you can get for hosting Minecraft. You get the advantages of full speed DDR5 memory, and also, it's the AM5 socket, which what makes that so exciting is that the motherboards are newer than like 2016. So these motherboards on these three nodes here, each one of these has 64 gigabytes of DDR5. However, none of these have network cards in them. None of them, because the newer motherboards have inbuilt 2.5 gigabit networking. So, where these only had one gigabit like management ports and one gigabit which isn't really enough to transfer a 10 gigabyte Minecraft server user instance in a reasonable amount of time, 2.5 gigabit is properly decent. So basically why I got the 2.5 gigabit switch here is because these three nodes, which are these three black wires here, go all the way up to these three here and they're getting their full 2.5 gigabit speed Saved me a bunch of money not buying network cards because it's inbuilt into the newer motherboards, which is Aww. lovely. And also there's one more 10 gigabit SFP plus here. This goes to the node that basically controls the cluster because all of these nodes are running Proxmox OS. So then I can use their remote KVM from my computer, which is built in rather than needing like a big fancy one. So on these three up here, while you don't have some of the good features that the Super Micro motherboards have, so you have no IPMI. However, because they're running Proxmox, Mox OS. I can control it on that and there's not really going to be a situation where I'm going to need to reinstall the operating system massively, which is nice. So yeah, these are my three big ones. These servers right now with 64 gigabytes of RAM in each, they have capacity for 10 servers, which is three gigs of RAM allocated per server. But you can do one gigabyte of over allocation because a Minecraft server instance is not going to be maxing out its RAM 24 seven. So every single server Minecraft instance runs with three gigabytes of RAM, except for on the primary node where they run with four because that's the cluster controller. So it's best not to over allocate because if that one breaks, single point of failure. Woo! You know what's crazy? These ones are so loud. It's the newest hardware. We're talking hardware from a year ago, maybe two at a stretch. And it's so loud. Whereas this stuff down here from 2016, shh. not quite shh, but it's like a ooh, where these ones are like a like, you know what I mean? I don't understand servers, but hey, if you run your Minecraft server on play.hosting, it will be made with love by me, with my very limited knowledge. I promise you an SLA of 6%. Now, the last final bits of the rack. We've got another PDU here. This one is a dedicated PDU for just all the networking stuff. Also, there's a lot of redundant power connectors here because the networking stuff goes down, everything goes down. And then up here, we have another PDU. This is for the higher power servers. They have their own PDU because they draw more power. That's my rack. That's my rack. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I didn't yap too much. I've got a couple. 
other projects in the works. I've got a couple spare server chassis over here as well. And this is the workbench where I record all the videos I do here. I know this is probably gonna be the second video, but I promise more are coming. If you want to see and track the process of my first ever live ops service with Minecraft servers, please do feel free to like and subscribe on this video. I'm gonna keep doing more niche tech stuff like this. And maybe we'll get another rack update soon when I've got more stuff. I only have room for four more servers in this rack and then I get to have a new one. I'm not obsessed, I'm not obsessed. It's a dangerous hobby. Well, Tub Pewter's Nation. I hope you enjoyed this rack tour. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll try to respond to as many as possible. I'll keep you updated in two days for when the service launches on if it goes well or if it goes terribly. Later.